Oh, hello everyone and welcome to uh, this afternoon's uh, webinar. Thank you for taking the time out to come and join myself, Anna, and my husband, David, who is sitting uh, behind me actually today. Um, but before we start looking at what is happening uh, on the markets, may I just draw your attention to the disclaimer that I know you can see on your screen. As you know, trading can be a very risky business, so please, please don't ever think of using money that you cannot afford to lose very quickly. As always, we'll we, be, we will be looking at the charts uh, through the prism of volume price analysis, which is uh, those of you who perhaps have not come across uh, VPA, volume price analysis before. It's essentially looking at the price action, but also seeing how that interacts with the volume, because what we're actually looking for is confirmation that uh, the price uh, the price action we are seeing is genuine or not so and we do that by looking at the volume because volume should be supportive of price action going up and going down and if it's not it's an anomaly so that sort of is a very big um, signal that basically says hey hey something is going on here now VPA is is that's just the overall broad um, overarching uh, you know um, uh, methodology and within that uh, as I said we've got price action volume candles candle patterns support and resistance very very important in VPA and time and by time I don't just mean the time chart that you are looking to trade uh, but also multiple time frames and we also look at non-time based charts either Renko or Tick and I think we're going to have a look at some of those today and to help uh, traders understand the methodology a little better the the principal book is a, there is a, a companion book with worked examples of the methodology and they're all available on Amazon right now let's have a look I've actually got something slightly different today I've actually got here um, the equivalent, this is the, the, the um, version, if you like, of the FTSE 100 futures. And it's a bit nostalgic for David and myself because this is where we started all those years ago. We actually started trading FTSE 100 futures, which when you think about it, is completely mad for a, a, new, a new trader. Um, but, you know, it's um, day trading became very fashionable at the end of, of the 90s, as it is once again with uh, what's been happening with the virus. And and here we are again, uh, and I'm looking at the FTSE 100. I've got a particular reason for the FTSE, other than obviously we've got a nice piece of price action going on at the moment. And as we can see, it is actually paused at a, a support, uh, very su important support level uh, on our Camarilla indicator. Support resistance, you can, you have to find a way of defining it on the chart. In terms of uh, our methodology, we use price-based support and resistance. Um, number of times a price, um, a, a line, a level is hit. And on the MT4, MT5 uh, platform of the indicator that we've developed for this, what actually happens is you get um, a slightly thicker line, as you can see here, means it's 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 a, a more it's a stronger uh, either a support or resistance level. Or you have this hash line on Ninja Trader. When we'll have a look at David's um, machine, um, we have this indicator is we've called the accumulation distribution indicator. And basically, it, the lines actually thicken; they get thicker and thicker. So the stronger the uh, the region, um, you will know that visually as uh, as it were. We weren't able to do it for MT45 because of the um, the constraints of the code. We also look at support and resistance through the prism of volume. And here we have what we call the volume point of control. This is, if you like, the fulcrum It's, it's actually, uh, of the chart. It's basically volume and price, but over time. So it highlights, if you like, the, those phases of price action where there is no clear bias to the price action. And you can see the histogram here at, at, at the back that picks out those regions where, uh, as I said, you have a, a, an increase of volume over time. It's a density of, of volume. And that also acts as support and resistance. Um, we also have, I haven't had a, an in, triggered on this piece of price action, but if we look at this candle here with these little uh, purple dots, this is when the price action is outside of the average true range. Um, this indicator is triggered. It's triggered in real time. And what happens is it happens in when markets are moving very fast. 
huge opportunity for market makers insiders to trap in uh, to trap traders but it, what it also does it also then um, gives another uh, resistance and support point so once the um, price action calms down in order for the price action to move either one way or another that this level has got to be broken now what happened here was quite interesting on the five minute chart you you had a, a, a a whole series of um, volatility candles. You had the first one. The typical reaction is the price action retreats to within the spread of the candle, which it did here, shot straight back up. Uh, a lot of volume under this candle as well, but we know we're in a very volatile um, market condition, if you like. So we just have to wait until, you know, it calms down. It's like, you know, you throw a pebble into a, a rock into the middle of a pond and you have these ripples. You have to wait till the ripples die down. Then we had a third, um, not a fourth. Then we had yet another one. This is what typically happens after uh, volatility. You get a period of congestion. But if you look again, there's the top and the bottom. And in fact, it didn't break the high of that volatility candle, but did actually break the low. And this is what I'm saying. So that also creates uh, a support and resistance level. So we have support and resistance based on price. We have support and resistance uh, regions that are created from the VPOC. And finally, what we've, we've done and you could use Fibonacci. I, we just happen to have used, uh, you know, the Camarilla protocol. We have this indicator which um, gives some hierarchy to these levels. And I've been looking at this piece of price action on the FTSE here, and this is what I was expecting. I was expecting a certainly a move to the S4 on the 15-minute chart, and it has cooperated and what tends to happen it then pauses we have to wait until it's, it could reverse or is it actually going to carry on lower so if we take that as the primary trend lower that we've seen here from the break of the volume point of control we've got some buying we've got buyers stepping in here at this level we know it's an important level because on the s4 and by coincidence and it's purely a coincidence it's very close to the s4 on the hourly chart. The Camarilla works in uh, in um, the, the values that are given uh, by the indicator. Uh, intraday, they change every day and they will refresh on time frames up to, but not including uh, the hour, but on the hour, the levels that you see here, these are valid for the whole of the week. And that really just, you know, is support and resistance, I think, on the next, the next level, excuse the pun, as it were. And the non in, a non-time based chart, this is the piece of price action that we're looking at the moment. This is on the Renko. We can see the, the consolidation that we had here. Uh, we've had a break of this support. It's not a hugely strong support at 57.62, but it's still pointing lower. But we know why it's paused, because it's paused at a significant uh, support level as highlighted by the S4 on the 15 minute and the S4 on the hourly. So because it's an, uh, the, you've got this confluence of levels on two time frames, you know that, you know, if it's got to go through, it's got to have a lot of, uh, a lot of volume, but it's going to pause. And you use these levels in a number of different ways. You use them as your, as potential targets, potential price objectives, and also for um, stop loss as well. Now, the reason, the other reason I got uh, the FTSE here is because I don't know if the person is in with us today or not. I'll just have a quick look. Uh, do, 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 if you just bear with me. Uh, no, so it doesn't matter. So I'll send him a, a link to uh, the recording. The question I was asked was, he is an index trader, but of the FTSE 100, and he wanted to know whether uh, looking at um, the currency market, the forex market, and in particular the British pound, uh, what should he look for to perhaps give him an edge for trading this particular index? And it's a really interesting question because it also applies to um, you know whatever index. So it could be the, we always we look at the U.S. indices because this is the the, the North American, uh, this is specifically for the North American session, but it did actually get me thinking, and I did um, a bit of sort of um, a background, a quick background reading on the FTSE 100, and it's it's very very interesting how currencies, how um, by looking at the forex market, let's have a look here. I've got the here we are. 
um, will that how that can help you with a potentially what is happening in the stock market in an index an index is just a reflection of the stock market now back in 2017 i believe let's have a look if i've got it here yeah right and i've deliberately chosen 2017 because this is what it used to be the FTSE 100 um, was very sensitive to what was happening with sterling and the prime reason for that is because the weighting of the of the index as it said here 70 71 percent of the revenues generated by the FTSE 100 companies came from outside of the uk it was heavily weighted to mining uh, oil stocks commodities so those companies, although they were based, they might may have had their headquarters in the UK or they were listed on the stock exchange because their revenues uh, were derived from commodities and commodities are based in dollars. When the dollar rose and the pound fell because they were you know they were earning in dollars and they converted back into uh, into a uh, 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 British pound, they were going from a strong currency to a weak currency, that would improve their bottom line. So basically, and, and this was Schroeder's actually did the calculation. So essentially, uh, as I said, the large proportion of profits is made in dollars. If sterling weakens, then the dollar revenues once converted are worth more. In three months, the FTSE rose 10.4, the pound fell 12.8. But that is 2017 things are a little different and what i'm going to suggest to this person who, who who wrote to me is you have to look at what is making up the index it also applies uh, the index the us in any index um you know, the dax or the for example the nq now we know the nq the nasdaq is primarily tech stocks and when tech stocks are doing well and in these last few months because of um, you know the way the market has been going the whole of the market has been pulled up higher in the us by about five stocks that's facebook google um, apple amazon the rest of the companies in in those in, in that index have really not done terribly well. Um, so the thing I would suggest, certainly with the FTSE, is go and have a look at what is making up the FTSE at the moment. The companies that now make up the 100. What's interesting also with uh, the FTSE that in back in January, uh, back in June, when we had you know obviously the virus, Carnival, which is a big a cruise company and EasyJet were actually thrown out and they were replaced. They were replaced by local companies. So you, so when you want to trade uh, an, an index, I'm using the FTSE, first of all, see what are the constituents, what are the weightings of those companies? Um, do they derive most of their income from abroad in foreign currency because if they do as they did back in 2017 then currency fluctuations are going to make a big difference to uh, the bottom line and that is also going to make a uh, make a difference to when the uh, when the index is going to rise and fall and of course if it's primarily local companies or com you know uk based companies that are earning in the uk what is going to drive the footsie well it's going to be it's going to be the economy. Um, it's going to be Brexit. Um, it's going to be all sorts of uh, maybe other reason, but are based more to do with the local economy. So you have to do a little bit of research into uh, the background for the index. And as I said, and then um, look at does it have an impact on uh, what the currency is actually doing? Now, what else I had here? So that was uh, that was that. Have anything else you want to say to that, David? Have I left anything out on on the um, looking through the index? No, David, no, have I sort no. of covered it as well? Yeah. Let's have a look. Earnings. And then, of course, you've got to look at earn, you know, when the um, the um, if you've got um, in an index, you will find companies don't have equal weighting. It isn't as if you've got 100 companies and they've all got one share. Isn't that true? They've all got different weightings in the in the index. So check out who are the, the big dogs of the index, if you like. So because when they have got their earnings, they are going to, you know, they're going to either pull the index up 
or they are going to push it down. So that's a sort of a little bit of background uh, that I wanted to say about um, certainly the FTSE, but it applies. You apply those those um, those points, if you like, this fundamental the fundamental analysis of an index to anything. And moving to the US, uh, the S and P, or, or or the you know whatever the Nasdaq, or you look at one of the other indices, you would apply the you know you'd ask the same questions. Um, the the US economy is is fairly self-contained, but there are companies there that earn abroad. So is the uh, is the value of the dollar likely to impact? Uh, a majority of the companies that are in that particular index and looking at this week what is going to happen and what I've done is it's um yesterday was a of course we had a fantastic day yesterday with a big fall in the uh, in uh, the apparently the Dow I think the Dow almost went down a thousand points but it's a little bit more subdued today let me have a look oh oh I'm fine sorry do it's very subdued and also uh, volatility that we always say look at the VIX certainly if you're uh, for sentiment on the US markets and the FTSE 100 also has its own version of uh, the VIX so you which you can find at investing.com let's see what's happening very quickly are uh, the futures in fact it's a very curious pattern those of you who I don't know if you if you're lucky enough like us to be able to uh, look at the markets both from the London session and you know in the northern hemisphere we are very we're very spoiled we, we we've got both you know we've got the whole day and we've got London Europe and then we've got the US um, if you've noticed lately, they tend to rise in the morning and then come the US session, they tend to, um, you know, they can have a bit of a fall and then perhaps they 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 come back later. Now, what's happening on that? That's up. Well, the Nasdaq is up uh, 92. Let's have a look. That's what they're saying. Yeah. But it's they are look. They're still looking pretty uh, fragile. But if you're an intraday trader, if it's a buy, it's a buy, and if it's not a buy, it's 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 not a buy. And even yesterday, after that huge fall, in fact, I've got the um, I've got the uh, where is it? There we are. I said I showed it this morning. Let's have a look. Yeah. I can open it. There we are. This was the big fall in the YM. This is the five minute chart. You know, the, the two bar reversal came in and and up it went. And I think it also it all it actually went up. I think there was some talk of uh, a hint that it was it was Pelosi's spokesperson who said, well, maybe there could be a, a deal, a stimulus deal before um, the election. But that's all fallen by the wayside. And at the moment, all we are, uh, what's driving the markets at the moment are obviously we've got the election, we've got the virus, we've got increasing numbers. But the big thing this week is earnings and earnings, earnings, and I've got them here Thursday. So if you're intraday trading, a game on the indices Thursday is the most, uh, probably the most important day of the week. There's just so many companies reporting that day. You've got I, you've got Apple, you've got Amazon, Alphabet. I mean, it goes on and on and on, as you can see here. Tomorrow, some of these guys from these companies, I believe, are up in Congress. They, they uh, some. Uh, on some committee, but I think the big um, uh, the big uh, questions are going to come on the 16th of November, which is after the election. Let's have a look. Uh, we are there. We are. Let's have a look. Quick, quick, quick. And that's it. This is interesting. The um, Exxon they were actually ejected from the Dow, weren't they, David? They were. Sort they, were. Of, they were. They they'd been. There was a. They were just thrown out and replaced by. I can't remember. It's Salesforce came in. Totally, it was a, I'm sure it was Salesforce. Yeah. Again, it's one of these things. If you're trading the YM or you're trading the Dow, you really need to keep, you know, just be aware of, of who's in, who's out, what their weighting is, do they earn overseas, is the currency um, movement in currency is going to have a big impact on their bottom line? Because you know, this all this stuff is going to have an uh, an effect. Oh dear, old GE are coming in today, and we've also got some um, some pharmaceuticals. We've got uh, GSK who are in the FTSE 100, um, and we've got Moderna, obviously. With so you've got the virus. There's a there's all these strands that you've got to be aware of. All this that's in the background. I know it seems like you, there's an awful lot you've got to keep in in your head uh, simultaneously, but honestly, um, you know you you do. 
it does come to a point when you you know you think oh right you, you know you make yourself a calendar there's lots of them around i actually subscribe to both bloomberg i've subscribed to the uh, the financial times these guys they put all this data together and you know the beginning of the week you you know you know what you're trading you've got the, the you've got the information and those are the days that you think oh right something might you know tip the balance is it you're not trying to predict um, you know what's going to happen you know good results bad results you just have to be aware that there is this event and it's a, a potential risk event so when you see the price action and you know you've got it at the, on the back of your mind it could cause a reaction now back to back to my dear old footsie what's happening I feel quite nostalgic David on this one there we are <laughs> yeah, we had an attempt to rise not gone very far it's a very steady of all the indices i would say this is not terribly not terribly scary as it were on the 15 minute as i said it's these two levels so i'll keep an eye on it if they if it goes through uh the uh the s4 then we will certainly get a continuation of the downwards trend the, the renko is is basically uh keeping us in if you're not in the trade at the moment at least you've got the levels you can decide whether to go with the break or what can happen with the S4, you can actually get a, a reversal, but we are coming almost to the end of, uh, of certainly of the cash market coming to a close in, in the UK. I think it's probably something more interesting over the other side. If you've got any questions, just drop them into the chat box. I'll happily answer them either on air or write, you know, type in the, in, in the chat box. Um, otherwise, I will pass over to David. <laughs> 